Hey, what's happening guys? Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, wire terminal connections. It doesn't matter if they're the ring style or the spade style or the lug style. It's just about the connections themselves and whether it's better to crimp them or to solder them. And I know this can be a really hot button issue for people. Let me start by saying the industry standard is to crimp with a proper crimp tool. And we're going to get into the reasons for that. Now, what I have here are uh, four pieces of wire. Length doesn't matter. They're all 22 gauge. The two red pieces are solid core. And the two yellow pieces are stranded. So what we're going to do is we're going to crimp one, solder one of each. And then we'll check them out electrically. We'll check them out physically. And we'll discuss the reasons why one might be better than the other. So, first of all, you're going to need to get yourself a proper set of crimpers. Doesn't matter what kind, you know, just some sort of ratcheting crimper. You're going to want to strip the wires to the proper length. These are stripped to about a quarter of an inch. How you do it from here is pretty much personal preference. I like to clamp them in here first. And just make sure I line everything up where I want it. And squeeze. And now we've got a nice tight crimp there. So we'll do the same to the other one. there we have a nice connection of our solid wire pretty good pretty tight we'll check it out electrically in a minute next we have our stranded wire same deal we'll crimp them in here Don't want any careless whiskers sticking out. Whoa, whoa. One got away. We'll get back to that. Man, butterfingers, huh? Okay. All right, so there we go. Good connections, good and solid. Let's check them out electrically. Good connections there. As you can hear, good connections there. So, good to go. Now let's do the solder connections. Okay, we're going to start again with our solid core 22 gauge wire, which I will kind of carefully place in there. Then I'm going to tin the end of my iron here just a little bit. Give that a second to cool. And yeah, we've got a pretty good connection there. And we'll do it one more time. This one might be a little more difficult because there's going to be some weight hanging off of it. But we should be able to get it, no problem.
Okay. Give it a second to cool. Good. Now we'll do the same with our stranded connectors or our stranded wire. I, I would generally tin everything first, but that's just me, so that's why I'm not doing it here because I know a lot of people don't do that. Now one thing you want to be real careful with is that you don't apply too much solder and there's a reason for that which we'll get into here in a second. And that's also the reason that I have these tilted down. So for this last one, I'm going to tilt it up a little bit so that you get a better view of the actual solder joint being made. Let me make this a little precarious here, but this should work. All right, clean my iron. A little tinning. And that should do it. We'll give her a second to cool down. Did we get it? No, we did not. All right, try this again here. See, this is the reason that you want to tin your wires beforehand. Had that had tin on it, or solder on it rather, it would have flowed into there quite nicely. Come on, cool down. There we go. Okay, so let me uh, let me break this down. Okay, so here are our soldered connections. We'll check out the solid first. Good. And then we'll check out our stranded. Good. No worries there whatsoever. So which one should you do? Well, in my opinion, it depends on two things. Where you're going to use the crimp the connection, the wire, and the type of wire that you're using. Okay. If you're using solid wire, then I don't think it matters. And the reason for that is solid wire is solid. If it's going to be in a high vibration environment, it's not going to last. It's that's just, you know, the wire is copper. It's uh, you know, it's tin copper. Copper work hardens. Of this move which means it's going to get harder and it's going to get more brittle as it's used so solder tin your connections or crimp your connections with solid core wire I would say one is the same as the other now when you're coming to stranded wire this is where I think it makes a difference if you're going to be using these in a high vibration environment say automotive motorcycle marine aviation well, if you're doing aviation, you're following specific rules, but anything else, you know, you want the salt, the stranded wire because it's going to be flexible, except where you soldered it. See, now I was very careful to solder these down here so that no solder was able to wick up into the insulation jacket. So my my wire remains flexible, okay, just as it does with the, uh, the crimp connection. Now, let me grab another piece of the same wire here. This is the 22 gauge stranded wire. And I'm gonna strip it. As 
same quarter inch strip that I used before. This time I'm going to tin it. You know, the reason we tin is the old saying that Chief Reyes taught me many, many years ago. Solder flows where solder has been, so tin, tin, tin. So we tin the iron, we heat up the wire, we apply solder to the wire. And we end up focus. There you go. We end up with a nicely tinned wire. But we've lost the flexibility of the strands. See, this wire is no longer flexible like that. We've now made it stiff. And not just stiff here, but it's stiff clear back into here. So if we now put this in a connector and crimp it, the wire is no longer free to flex around as it did here. We've now induced a stiffness in it that is eventually going to break. So, where do we leave this? Well, I leave it with you and your experience. Like I said, crimping is the industry standard. A well done crimp is a perfect electrical connection. It is also an excellent mechanical connection. So, I jerk pretty hard on that. <laughs> Don't solder if you don't have to, is what I'm saying. Okay. All right. One last thing before we go. In a couple videos ago, I showed these Sanuki, Sanuki, whatever they're called, crimpers and these ferrule connectors. And I screwed it up, and you guys called me on it. So I took down the video because I crimped them improperly. I've never used these before, so... I did it wrong. So here we have a 18 gauge. These are the 18 gauge ferrules. The way that you have to do this is you have to get the wire up into the connector and then you put the crimp onto the metallic part. So my apologies to you guys for talking about something that I wasn't experienced with and uh, my apologies to Sanuki for not showing their product in the best light that's on me so there's a properly crimped ferrule connection and those are tight and they're not going anywhere you should be able to see focus Come on. Come on. Really? Come on, focus. Wow, I just don't want to focus. But anyway, you can kind of see the wires in the end there. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. 67,000 subscribers, I think. Come on, guys, help me get to 100,000. I'll buy you all a drink. That's it. I'm out. Peace.